Here's the video for rationalizing the denominator. And we begin with a problem that was the last one we looked at as part of one of the simplifying radicals examples. It, it started off as radical 9 over 2. And we had a perfect square in the numerator that radical 9 became the 3. But in the denominator, we could not simplify that radical 2. So there it shows up in the denominator. Now this problem is not finished because there is a radical in the denominator. And it, at this point, you can just think that it's bad form. It's like bad grammar. And, and there's some debate going on about how useful is it really for us to rationalize the denominator. But for now, and, and in my opinion, for at least the near future, we're not getting away from rationalizing the denominator. So we definitely need to know how to do it. So we spot that there's a radical in the denominator. That's what tells us that there is a need to rationalize the denominator. The way that we rationalize the denominator is basically by seeing what's down there and pairing it up. I see a radical 2, I'm going to multiply by another radical 2. Because that radical 2 times radical 2 is radical 4, or pretty quickly I, I want to turn that to a nice 2. And if you like to say, well, radical 2 times radical 2 is just 2, I think that that is excellent. This middle uh, checkpoint to call it radical 4, it can be helpful. If it's helpful, we do it. I think the smoothest thing you can get to is saying, oh, a radical 2 times radical 2 is a pair of 2s, which means just one 2 out of the radical. And we don't have that problem about there being a radical in our answer. It's just that that we're trying to avoid, that we're trying to fix when we rationalize the denominator. Just the fact that our answer has a radical in the denominator. So this is bad form. This is an acceptable answer. But we, whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator, so we have to carry this out. It's a 3 times radical 2. And one last look, can I simplify this fraction? Now I don't have any thoughts about the 2 with the 2, because this 2 in the numerator is in a radical. The 2 in the denominator is not in a radical, so an insider with an outsider cannot be canceled. What I'm looking for would be the outsiders, the 3 and the 2, and we cannot do any simplifying there, so it's just 3 radical 2 over 2. I want to say just a couple of other things about rationalizing the denominator. So we started this problem with the 3 over radical 2, or actually with this radical 9 over 2, which we could simplify to this point. And we did our moves to rationalize the denominator and came up with this answer. Now, go and grab a calculator if you don't have one nearby, because we're going to do a couple of these radicals. And I just want to show you that we will get the same decimal value from each of these expressions. We haven't changed the value at all. If I do 3 divided by square root of 2, I get approximately 2.12132. That decimal will not end. It has no repeating part. That's, that's our irrational number. Now if I come over to this side and put into the calculator 3 times square root of 2, and then take the answer and if you divide by 2, I get that exact same answer, about 2.12132 and so on. So I want to show you that we have not changed the value at all. What we've done is maybe make this number a little bit easier for us to see that it does equal approximately this 2.1. So 3 times radical 2. You get to a point where some of these small radicals, you know what the approximately what decimal they're equal to. So square root of 2 I know is about 1.4. Square root of 3 I know that's about 1.7, a little bit more than 1.7. So trying to just in my mind come up with what decimal this approximately equals to, I can say, well, okay, the 2, that's about a 1.4, and 1.4 times 3, that's about 4.2, and 4.2 divided by 2 is about 2.1. So with no radical in the denominator, it's easier for me to come up with a decimal approximation. It's a lot easier to do divide by 2 than it is for me to see 3 divided by 1.4 is about this. 
That's a lot trickier for me to see because I'm trying to divide by not a whole number, a 1.4. So 3 divided by 1.4 is actually about this number, about 2.1, but it's not easy for me to see when I'm dividing by 1.4. It's a bit easier for me to see it when I am just dividing by that whole number 2. So that's one of our reasons, just one reason. There are definitely other reasons that we want to rationalize a denominator, but that's one main reason. And probably one reason why people these days think we don't really need to learn about rationalizing the denominator, because with calculators so ubiquitous, I don't really have a problem with trying to see this. I can just punch it in to come up with the decimal approximation. But I haven't heard about the revolution yet, so for now we still need to learn about how to rationalize the denominator. Our next example for rationalizing the denominator. Now my steps through these problems are, can I simplify the fraction, and I see 2a over b, so I cannot simplify just the fraction. Now I think about the radical. Can I simplify the radical? Do I have any pairs of factors in here? And I don't. I have 1, 2, and 1a over 1b. So no pairs of factors. I can't simplify the fraction. I can't simplify the radical. So that's all the simplifying I can do. The last thought I need to have is, okay, it's not finished yet because there is a radical in the denominator. And you have to get your eyes accustomed to it that a fraction inside of a radical, remember our rule about division, we can look at that as two separate radicals. So there is that radical B in the denominator, and that's our problem. To rationalize the denominator, I would need to get rid of the radical. I see a radical B and I say to myself, well, if I multiply in there a second B, that's going to bring that B out of the radical. Okay, so a radical in the denominator is our problem. I paired it up because a pair of B's can come out of the radical. No more radical problem solved. The rest of the problem is just moves that we have to do to make this a legitimate method. So those things are whatever we do to the numerator, whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. Multiplication. So we have a radical 2 times a times b. Think to yourself about the simplifying. Can I simplify this fraction? And I'm not thinking about the b's because B in the numerator is inside of a radical, and the B in the denominator is outside of a radical. So definitely I cannot cancel the Bs. There's nothing to cancel with the 2 or the A in the numerator. So fraction is simplified. And the radical that we have is 2AB in the numerator. Is that radical simplified? It is. So we're finished. So when it comes to us being finished, am I finished? You are finished if... The fraction is simplified, number one. Also, the radical is simplified, and three, that we don't have a radical in the denominator. So those are the three main ideas that we're working with these problems. And just ask yourself those three things before you want to say that your problem is finished. Is the fraction simplified? Is the radical simplified? And do I have any radical in the denominator? So if, if your answers are yes, the fraction is simplified, yes, the radical is simplified, and no, I don't have any radical in the denominator, then you're finished.